here's a question. Uh, can you ever be too clean? When you're buying soaps and body washes, do you reach for the bar or bottle labelled antibacterial? Well, you might think they wash off dirt and kill germs. But the health regulator in the US, the Food and Drug Administration, is calling for a safety review. It says they could make us more resistant to antibiotics and even affect our hormone levels. Well, joining us from our Birmingham studio is Dr. Mark Weber, who is a senior uh, research fellow at the School of Immunity and Infection at Birmingham University. Well, I'm not sure he is there, but we're hoping that uh, some antibacterial wash hasn't done for him. And in the studio is Dr. Ranj Singh and a woman who's made a career out of telling television viewers how to clean properly, uh, Aggie uh, McKenzie. Uh, Mark Weber, I'm told you are there in Birmingham, so I'm very glad that you've done the study in this area. Um, what have you found when it comes to antibacterial soap? So what we've been looking at really is the potential, as you, you referred to, for these antibacterial compounds that are used in hand washes and soaps to select for mutant bacteria that are resistant to the compounds in use, but also to antibiotics. And we've shown that this is something that can happen in the lab and that it may happen in nature. So the FDA have used that as one of the reasons why they've decided to change the rules today or propose to change the rules for licensing antibacterial soaps and hand washes and basically you need to be able to show what they're suggesting that they're actually better than soap and water because there's very little evidence that any of these antibacterial products do a better job than simple soap and water. Right, so in your home, I just go, I want to get down to the nuts and mm -hmm. bolts of this. In your home, do you have antibacterial washes or do you just use ordinary soap? Ordinary soap. Ordinary soap and water in the house will do fine for washing your hands. Yeah, I mean, why have we got to this stage? Is it a sort of almost obsessive behaviour? Behavior? Yes, I think people have become um, germ-phobic, completely ridiculous. And what they don't make the link is between MRSA in hospitals and what goes on at home. Because if you're using too many <coughs> antibacterials, then bacteria become resistant to, um, to the antibacterials. And then you've got a whole set of new problems. Right, when people come into your surgery... Do you want them to kind of, you know, do the old well, hand as, wash? Well, as Aggie said, it's a very different situation at home than it is in hospital. What the guidance that the FDA or the warning the FDA has issued is mainly about using antibacterials in the household. And if a manufacturer is going to claim that it helps you in terms of remo removing excess bacterial organisms or making you less likely to be unwell, then they need to be able to back up those claims. Problem is, in real life, those claims do not live up to scrutiny. In a hospital setting, we use similar compounds, but for a very different reason. We use it for infection control and infection prevention, and it's very important in those settings, but that is quite a different subset to what's going on at home. The vast majority of these products are not necessary. No, quite. We all have, all our bodies are covered in bacteria, f good bacteria, and we need those to keep healthy. So, so, so what has happened? Have we just become neurotic? Well, I think <laughs> what manufacturers yeah. have done, it's a big industry, they want it, well, what's the next step? How can we make our hand wash or our detergent even better? How are we going to make you buy it? Well, tell you what, we'll label it antibacterial. We will prey on this paranoia yes. and fear that people have right. of germs, which in some instances is, is warranted, but in the vast majority of cases at home is not. Yeah. Tell you what, we'll boost ourselves by making these claims, but now they have to back them up, quite rightly so. Right, let us go back to you, Mark Webber, uh, sitting there in uh, Birmingham. I mean, why do you think it has become such a, a kind of source of almost obsessive behaviour that people have to have antibacterial hand washes the whole time? I mean, we have it uh, to a certain extent in this place where everyone's you know, busy cleaning their laptops before they sit down at them. Yeah, well, I think you have to realise that bacteria are everywhere and, and we actually carry more bacterial cells around with us than our own. So we're never going to live in a sterile world. And increasingly, people have been subjected to things being marketed as antimicrobial. And then you suddenly, well, it implies that there's a benefit from getting rid of these bugs. If you're not infected, you're not in a hospital setting, then actually soap and water in the home for washing your hands, bleach for washing your toilet, will do a perfectly adequate job. And actually, this, uh, the claims of things being antibacterial are not even substantiated. So most of these antibacterial hand washes actually do, don't do a better job than soap and water. So perhaps we've been the victim to the marketing. Yeah, I mean, that which is exactly Ranger's point. So um, I, I just wonder whether, you, you know, it's so difficult to change people's behaviour, isn't it? Because people have bought into this idea. Yeah, but on the flip side, I think people also are quite canny. And if they start realising that they're paying for something that isn't actually giving them an added benefit, then perhaps they'll be starting to move back towards the more traditional uh, cleaning methods, soap and water and bleach. Right, Aggie, I'm coming back to you. Come on, yes. your, advi your advice for staying clean and healthy. 
Well, it's very, very simple. When you're washing your hands, use hot water, just normal soap, rub palms together, you know, interlace fingers, get the backs of the digits, do the thumbs and, and rinse your hands and then dry them properly. It's very important that you dry your hands either on a clean towel or a paper towel. The other thing that's important, and, and to do this every, before you cook and before you eat. And the other thing that people, we're all taught to, if we have coughs and colds as children, to cover our hands, um, our mouth or our hands, wrong, 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 because then your hands are covered in germs. You cough or sneeze into the crook of your arm. It's much healthier. We need to start, start teaching our children to do that. That's Fair interesting. Point. So, so, so for the kids who've been watching Global uh, today, some wherever you are in the world, and they go to their mum and dad and say, "Look, I don't need to wash my hands. This all because it's really bad for you." Um, Before you eat, you must wash your hands. This it's is very common important. sense that has been yes. passed down generations. We've just become wash your lazy. hands before and after eating, especially after going to the toilet. So yes. many people do not wash their hands. Adults Fecal are bacteria. the biggest culprits of that. Yeah. And let's not forget here: these, at best, these products are ineffectual. At worst, these products may cause you harm. So you may have an allergy to these ingredients mm -hmm. and some of these things. They may interfere with some of your body chemistry, yeah. uh, and they may promote antibiotic resistance. So you know, definitely, it's not just. I think the problem is antibiotic resistance. Antibiotic you, resistance is a massively growing problem and is going to become even bigger as time goes on. We are, we really are in a global threat of super organisms that are super resistant and we are going to struggle mm -hmm. to fight them off. We need to use every tool in our armory and not use things unnecessarily. Right. We've been told, fascinating, thank you very much indeed all of you uh, for coming into uh, the studio. Really interesting uh, discussion.